You know, oftentimes I'm thinking, what can I make that people just don't think to make? And that story has led us here, and we're making everything. Okay, so today we are making gyros, Greek gyros. However you wanna say it, just don't say gyros, okay? Doesn't that hurt? You just hear gyro, what are you, gyroing your hips? This is essentially a flatbread sandwich that consists of pita, then meat, then tzatziki, my brain farted for a second there, and various other accoutrement like herbs and or red onion, yada, yada, yada. I could talk about this all day, but I'd rather get into the world of spinning meat and puffy bread. So with all that said, let's make this, shall we? All right, we're going all the way, homies. We got the homemade pita. We have the proper gyro being cooked on a rotisserie spit. And of course, an absolute unit of satsiki. Right, sorry about that. Let's first begin with our pita. Start off with three quarters of a cup plus two tablespoons or 207 milliliters of lukewarm water around 95 Fahrenheit. Then to that, you're gonna mix in one and a half teaspoons or six grams of instant yeast and one tablespoon or 14 grams of granulated sugar. Whisk that until dissolved, then let the rest of that bloom for about seven minutes. Then in a small bowl, whisk together two cups or 300 grams of all-purpose flour with two teaspoons or 14 grams of fine sea salt. Then realize a small bowl was a horrible choice and instead do that in a very large bowl. Excellent work, Josh, a true now, right before mixing, whisk one tablespoon or 13 grams of extra virgin olive oil into your bloomed yeasty mixture. Then pour that into your flour mixture and begin mixing the dough by hand. And as soon as it forms a dough, turn it out onto a work surface and give it a nice knead. It will be pretty sticky, so picking it up, slapping it down, and folding it over itself, also known as slap and fold. Wow, see how that name kind of just sounds similar? What the f frick? Anyway, this is an easier tactic to knead the dough. Now go ahead and slap and fold it for about one to three minutes or until smooth, but not tearing. Then spray a medium sized bowl with cooking spray, shape your dough into a light ball and carefully place it into your bowl, cover with greased plastic wrap and let that rise for one hour or until doubled. Now, as that's rising, you should do two things. First, you should pop a pizza stone into your oven and begin preheating it to its maximum temp at at least 475 or 500 Fahrenheit. Yes, it needs to heat the stone for over an hour. Otherwise, Papa will be very big sad. Now, while that's doing its thing, let's prep our meat. Yes, Joshi has the meat. Now, first you'll need three to four pounds of boneless pork shoulder and about one and a half pounds of skinless pork belly. Start by slicing your pork shoulder in a half inch thick slices all the way down that brother. And for the pork belly, you'll likely need to cut it into two even segments, then slice those into half inch pieces as well, sort of like half bacons. Oh, look at them being cute. And ready to be consumed. Now for the spice mix, snag a small bowl and combine, get ready for this, one tablespoon or 13 grams of smoked paprika, one tablespoon or 11 grams of garlic powder, one tablespoon or eight grams of ground cumin, one tablespoon or three grams of dried oregano, one tablespoon or four grams of finely chopped fresh thyme, one tablespoon or 14 grams of granulated sugar. <sighs> okay, we're almost there. And two tablespoons or 19 grams of kosher salt. Now give that some whiskey business, and that's your gyro meat spice. It's a lot, but don't skip any of these if you want it to taste absolutely mad, brother. Now place all your sliced meat in a container in single layers, seasoning each layer as you go until you've added all the meat, then add the rest of your seasoning and gently toss together. Finally, add in three tablespoons or 45 grams of white distilled vinegar. Toss again until everything is thoroughly coated. I do it in layers to make this easier to coat with seasoning and, you know, without shredding the meat to bits from violent tossing it around for too long. Now look, I bought this big rotisserie shawarma gyro roast meat thing, which honestly, I highly recommend, and the link is in the bio, and I'm gonna explain how to use it, but if you need an alternative, then you can always use the method in my al pastor recipe, and the link is in the bio for that skewer grill method. Now, anyway, stack your meat all the way up Papa's big rod, alternating pork shoulder and belly, until all of your meat is used and it comes up to the tippy top. If you're using a rotisserie like mine, be sure to fix your prong holster on the top as well, and that is your beautiful log of meat. Isn't it gorgeous? Gazing upon it feels no different than staring at the great mountains forged by Mother Nature. Now pop your fat meat log onto your rotisserie and head to the great outdoors for safety. Turn on your electric spindle, heat the grills to about medium low, if it gives that option, hopefully. Then all you gotta do is let it rotate and cook from anywhere between one to three hours, checking it often, and once the outside starts to fully cook, you can begin shaving it. Just be sure to avoid burning it as you do this. And really, that's all there is to it. This machine does the work for you. And it's one of my greatest investments yet. Okay, our rotisserie is going. It's time to finish the pita. Get your fully grown dough, punch the life out of it, and turn it onto a lightly floured work surface and cut it into six equal pieces. If you're extra like me, those pieces will be about 75 grams each. 
Now gently take your dough babies and form them into light balls and place them in a lightly floured container where they have some space. Top that with the lid and let them rest for 30 minutes covered obviously. To shape and bake, take one of your nice balls, lightly flour it, press it down to form a fat disc. That's disc, folks. Then roll it out into a six inch disc. It's about a third of an inch thick or so. Make sure to measure your disc so everyone is happy with your size. Transfer it to a small piece of parchment about the same size as the disc. You can always cut the parchment to proportion if needed. Then repeat with the rest of your nice little balls. So doing this three to four at a time, place your discs on a pizza peel and carefully slide them onto your heated pizza stone, making sure they're separated and bake for two to three minutes. You know they're done when they're puffed beautifully and are a light golden color. Remove them, transfer them to a tea towel to keep warm. Then repeat with the rest of your beautiful pitas that are so fluffy you might as well lay your head on them and enter an eternal slumber. Well, maybe not eternal, like a 20 minute nap or something. Next, make a quick tzatziki by just combining one and a half cups or 350 grams of Greek yogurt, half a large English cucumber that's been finely diced, one tablespoon of finely chopped parsley, one tablespoon of finely chopped dill, one tablespoon of finely chopped mint, the zest of one whole lemon, three cloves of grated garlic, and the juice from the lemon you just zested. Season that to taste with salt, give it a nice little mix, and that is your tzatziki. Now, if you're adding tomatoes, do me a favor and please slice them thinly and nicely and season them with salt and let them sit for a few minutes to cure before using them. Trust me, it's life changing. Now we can finally assemble. First, slice your meat fresh and hot, hot, hot from the spindle, always. You know, just get as much as you need to serve. Now take a big fat pita, flatten it. And yes, obviously you can stuff this, but I've always seen it wrapped like a taco, so you know to each their own. Now add in your juicy meat, a nice dollop of tzatziki, some sliced and ideally cured tomatoes, additional diced cucumber, and even mix a fresh parsley, fresh mint, and fresh dill. And finally, some very thinly sliced red onion, which ideally has been sliced paper thin and ran under some cold tap water to remove some of its bitter spiciness, but retain its sweetness. And that right there is the most bodacious, voluptuous, and nearly sensual gyros I've ever seen. Now let's see if all this work was truly worth it. So we have our gyro. Now, homemade pita. Homemade meat. I mean, come on, we put it on the spindle and everything. Do you have to go that far? Of course not. We blew it out of the water. What am I supposed to say? When I bit into this, my brain had so many things going off at once that for some reason, the very moment that I tasted it, my brain just immediately went, yeah, Squidward. I'm just being completely transparent with you guys. Oh, look at me, big man. Look at me. The meat is ridiculous. I know it's ridiculous because, well, I tasted it and it's insanely good, but I also saw Vikram's reaction. He took one bite, he had to walk it off. That's how good it was. The pita itself, soft, fluffy, chewy, terrible. Look at this. Oh my God. And also, by the way, guess what? There's a pocket inside too. All right, so that's enough of that. This is a big fat W. And if you wanna make your own euros and you've never done it before, this is the guide for you. You have every tool you could possibly need. And you get out there and you go do it. You do it for Papa. Papa Good night. You wanna know what else is full of fat meat logs and big bread pockets? B-roll. All right, guys, and that is it. So we made our gyros, and they turned out beautifully. Beautifully! First off, that pita was, it was perfect. Now, before anyone gets mad, I'm like, Josh, what the f You didn't stuff the pita? You idiot! Well, first off, okay, I've always seen it just put on top and then folded like a taco almost. That's how I've always seen it done. Now, you can absolutely stuff them if you'd like, and you could see that there was a pocket to stuff them in. So hey, live your life however you want, and if you wanna tell somebody else how to live their life, maybe you should reanalyze where you are and just stop. This has been Pita Pocket Thoughts with Josh. It was delicious, you should make it. If you wanna just make your own pita and then make the meat some other way, like on the grill, that's totally fine. You could do it that way, no problem at all. Pick something out of this or do the whole darn thing, you're not going to regret it. So with all this said, if you enjoyed this video or you learned something, then leave a like, subscribe, and I will see you 